رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين مولانا وسيدنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين المذلومين الهداة المهديين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرض أرواحنا له الفداء ولعنة الله على عادائه مجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال أمير المؤمنين وإمام المتقين علي بن أبي طالب وأما الليل فصافون أقدامهم تالين لأجزاء القرآن يرتلونها ترتيلا يحزنون به أنفسهم ويستثيرون به دواء دائهم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد Respected elders, brothers, sisters, salamun alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I don't know if you feel like me that Muharram has just gone by in a very quick whirlwind, it seems. Already we are nearly at the end of the first ten nights. May Allah accept our aza, forgive our sins, keep us always with Ahlul Bayt. Raise us under the flag of Aba Abdullah. Give us tawfiq to go to Karbala. O oh Allah, keep us united at all times. Keep us on seerah of Aimma at all times. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawat. Tonight's discussion is how to make one's life and lifestyle connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. We have had already many discussions. We have discussed regarding the world first of all, then the hereafter and death. Then we discussed some social issues. We discussed yesterday the Islamic concept of justice and fairness, especially from the point of view of leadership. Tonight is a discussion which is more focused towards our worldly lives some practical tips and some pieces of information and inspiration by our beloved first Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wassalam I want to start by giving a question for you to reflect upon why is it some people are able to stay focused on religion and upon God. Some people find it very difficult. Some people find it seemingly easy or easier. In our own lives, we find that sometimes our religious outlook is very good. It's focused. We are religious. We have God in mind. We have Ahlul Bayt in mind. Mainly around the times of Ramazan, Muharram, these times of the year, we are at a peak of spirituality. And then, as these days fade, our spirituality fades. And we can get dragged back into our normal lifestyles. It looks like those changes that we had promised ourselves have gone. Sometimes we go to Ziyarat, when we come back, we are charged spiritually. We feel good for a few weeks or a few months. But then after that, again, we sink low, we are back into our routines. Why is it some people have the tawfiq to pray on time, to fast regularly, to fast mustahab fasts, to pray namaz-e-shab, 
to be generous, to be amongst godly acts and activities, whereas some are not. What is the secret behind this? This is what we are going to discuss today. That a mu'min's attitude to his life, lifestyle and daily work has a huge impact upon his spirituality. How a mu'min sees his time, how a mu'min sees his daytime, his nighttime, each of these has a separate focus in Islam. Each of these has a separate way of approaching them in Islam. How does a mu'min view these things? This is very important. I'm going to refer you to khutbah number 193 of Nahjul Balagha. Brothers and sisters, if I can go away from Mumbai 2019 with one thing that you take from me, it would be spend more time with Nahjul Balagha. Open it. Look at it, read it, reflect upon it. You'll see it's just amazing. Just imagine the immense character of our first Imam being condensed and summarized in one document. That is Nahjul Balagha. You'll see the way he thinks, the way he feels, his ideas, his statements, his attitudes are all summarized in this one document called Nahjul Balagha. Khutbah number 193 is a very special khutbah. It is known by a number of names. The first name, the most famous name, is Khutbatul Muttaqeen, the khutbah of the pious. Another name, very similar, Khutbatul Sifatil Muttaqeen, khutbah which lists the qualities of the people of taqwa. And the third one, Khutbatul Hammam. Not Hammam. Hammam with Ha, we say the Ha with a topi. Not that big Ha, but Hayed Do Cheshm, the one with the two eyes. Ha with topi is shower or bathroom. No, not that. Hammam was a man, he came to Mola and he said, Sif Liyal Muttaqeen. Oh Ali, I have a request. Describe for me the people of Taqwa as if I can see them. And then Imam, after a little bit of a conversation, he goes into the list of the qualities of the pious people. And in this is our discussion today with Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. As Imam lists these qualities of the people of Taqwa, I just want to see what you're thinking. What do you think comes at the top of the list? If someone asked you, for example, if someone asked you, brother, sister, list for me, what is taqwa in Islam? What is a muttaqi person like? What would be the first thing you would say? Very good, he stops himself from prohibited acts, but that's not what Imam said. Fear of God, that's not what Imam said. The first thing, when you're talking about taqwa, what do you think the first thing to take care of is? Which behavior? Good akhlaq, no. This, well, it is a part of good akhlaq. You'll be surprised. Speech. First thing on the list of Imam's list of qualities, and I'm telling you, if you f reflect upon this, you'll understand why. Our speech is one of the things, honestly, it's going to lead to our destruction. Here, I don't mean just verbal speech. I also mean text speech, WhatsApp, emails, messages, whatever else people use to send messages these days. Part, first thing in the list of muttaqeen is speech. Imam says, Mantikuhumu sawab. Their speech is correct. They're careful on speech. They're careful what they say. One hadith which I came across recently, please think about this and 
we can discuss later or you can tell me what you think later one hadith which I came across is that at the end of time the only way a true mu'min will preserve his faith is ten parts nine of them is in silence mu'min will not be able to express himself imagine because he thinks either I'm being recorded or I'm being judged or someone's misquoting me or misinterpreting me or they don't like what I say or my words fall on deaf ears or I'll be attacked and on and on and on imagine the issues we have in the community sometimes we are not able to speak because I, we, I, I some, I'll give you my example I think if I say this I'll have 10 people tomorrow complaining you say one small thing people don't appreciate that you know we have to see these things in context they'll get on top of you but he said this but he didn't say this Baba I have 60 minutes do you want me to cover every single minute footnote of every single discussion it's not possible so nine parts of a mu'min's faith will be protected through silence he'll have to keep this shut and the tenth part what we say gosha nashini staying aloof like just getting on with his own life because he finds it difficult to mix in society stay away from sin wherever he looks there could be sins happening if he goes here there's gibat if he goes there there's gossip if he goes there there's slander if he participates here it's useless it's very difficult so the first thing this is not our discussion actually so let me not get too diverted otherwise more messages will come tomorrow that Molana said he's going to speak about one thing and he spoke about another let me not get too diverted the first thing in the list is speech anyway Mola goes through item by item by item in a very profound very amazing way if you please get time kutba number 193 I also have a series of lectures on this they are not yet complete you can catch up with those lectures as well how we go through each item one by one and we give a commentary upon what he has said regarding muttaqeen may Allah make us amongst the muttaqeen may Allah give us taqwa may Allah give us fear of God may Allah give us these qualities which our Imam has described salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Mawla begins to discuss after a few different qualities around 16 by my count there could be other counts as well depending on how you count the qualities 16 count 16 qualities by my count Mawla reaches this part of the Qutbah in which he says Wa amma layl. let me talk about nighttime first nighttime routine of a mu'min is what what does he do in night at night in his night times amma layl fasafuna akadamahum. as I'm saying these things please look at yourselves I have to look at myself as well are we doing these things or not fasafuna akadamahum. during the night they stand on their feet Talina li ajazail Quran, reciting portions of the Quran. So, first thing is at night time, a mu'min, a muttaqi, his time is devoted to Quran. Number one, Yuratilunaha Tartila, he's reciting the Quran in a very measured tone. That means he's not speeding through, nor is he trying to do his kiraat like a qari. He's just looking at the words reciting in a very measured manner this is interesting we will come on to this with this recitation he creates grief for himself and he seeks through the Quran a cure for his ailments. So now a mu'min, let us go into this in a little bit of depth. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. A mu'min in his nighttime routine has a specific 
list of activities and a timetable. He doesn't just pass the night with waste. He doesn't just pass the night just to sleep. He has a routine and a timetable. Number one, the Quran. The main activity in the daytime, especially for a man, women not so much, but for us men, we actually have an obligation during the daytime and that is to earn for our families. Men have to work hard. That's our portion. If you want to say it's unfair, men and women in Islam, you know many people say women are treated harshly. I don't agree. I say men are treated harshly. Men, we have to work whether you want to or not. You have to work. You have to earn. You have to provide for the family. That's daytime. That we'll come on to in a minute. But at night, we must realize that men and women, we have an obligation to use the night for spiritual advancement. What you can get at night in terms of the soul's journey is much, much more than what you can get in the day. Usually, in non-Muslim way of looking at things, non-Quranic way of looking at things, we usually say every hour is the same. What's the difference between 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11? There's no difference. These are all hours of the day. No. In Islam, we don't say this. In Islam, we say different portions of the day, the 24-hour cycle of a day, are different. And night time is especially important for spiritual progress. If you want to get closer to Allah in a serious way, think about your nighttime routines. Quran says, Inna na shi'ata layl hiya ashaddu wat'an wa aqwamu qila. Indeed, the vigil of the night is firmer in tread, in footstep, in, in your stability. And more upright in speech, whatever you say at night, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your prayers and these things, this is more appreciated. The most spiritual time of the day in the 24 hour cycle is what? We recite something at that time. Namaze Shab. Why Namaze Shab? Why not Namaze Din? Namaze Rose? No, Namaze Shab. It's a, there's a secret behind it. The secret is night time is special. Now, the prophetic practice and those with him has been described in the Holy Quran. Allah says, use your night wisely. Your Lord knows you stand vigil for nearly two thirds of the night. Holy Prophet sometimes, most of the night he was in Ibadah. At times a half Quran, at times one half of the night, at times one third. What does this tell us? Quran says two thirds, half or one third. What does that tell us? It tells us that no matter what amount, leave a portion of your night for conversation with God. It could be five minutes, could be ten minutes, whatever amount. Have a portion reserved for God. <clears throat> Quran says in the same verse, Allah knows that some of you will be sick. It can't be all the time. Some of you will be traveling. Some of you may be even working at some times at night. Others will be fighting in the way of Allah. So recite as much as is feasible. Carte blanche, open check. Allah says you do as much or as little as you want, but do some. Reserve some time for conversation with me, especially at night. Whatever good you send ahead, you will find it with Allah in a form greater with respect to reward. And plead to Allah for forgiveness. When you want to be forgiven for something, use the night time to ask. So one of the most recommended acts in Islam is namaz -e shab All of the great awliya, the imams, the prophets, and our great ulama, they would reserve time for namaz -e shab Imam Khomeini, what they say about him, what a blessed soul he was. What a blessed, blessed human being he was. 
what they say about him was that once somehow he missed his namaz -e shab he repented to Allah for one year he wasn't satisfied he didn't like it it felt very bad for him that one night I miss my namaz -e shab is there any repentance for missing a mustahab there's no repentance but he felt that he had to because he fell short of the standards that he set himself now namaz -e shab that is one thing I won't say much about namaz -e shab because mashallah at least in theory we are experts on namaz -e shab in practice whether we are experts I'm not sure but in theory we are experts in namaz -e shab let me talk about another time of the night salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad This time is also very important. Namaz Ishab starts at what time? Can someone tell me? After Maghrib Isha. I would slightly disagree. What is the start time of Shab? Layl. If Zohar is 12.40, PM, then we look at the AM equivalent. I would disagree with you slightly. Namaz e Shab. When is that time? I, 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 will, I will tell you the formula. It's a very easy formula. We have midnight. Midnight in Islam does not mean 12 AM. Midnight in Islam has a formula. The formula is this. You take Maghrib time. You take Fajr time. What is the halfway point between these two? Maghrib, let's say it is 7. And Fajr, let's say is 5. How many hours is that? 10. So you do 7 plus 5. So what time? 12. In this example, it's 12. Could be 11.30, could be 11.40, could be 12.20, could be 12.30. It's around that time. But not exactly midnight. So that is the start of namaz -e shab At the midpoint between Maghrib and Fajr. Can you pray earlier than that if you want? Yes. When you fear I'm not going to be able to wake up for whatever reason, you can pray it earlier, no problem. But the fazilat time, the proper time, is that midpoint until Fajr. Okay. Now Fajr is there. So let's say we wake up, we pray namaz -e shab we pray our namaz -e fajr two rakats, then what do we do? Typically we sleep. That's a big mistake. That's a big mistake, guys. We are missing one thing and generally our community doesn't know about this thing. There's still a portion of the night left which we are missing out on. This portion of the night which we are missing is called Bayne Tulu'ain. What does Tulu mean? Rising, rising. Tulu means rising. Tulu'ain, two risings. Which are these two risings? One, one rising of the sun, it's not, it's not correct to say sun, but one rising is Fajr time. Because the disk of the sun, how can I show this? Maybe like this. This is the horizon. When the disk of the sun is nearing the horizon, there's a redness. That gives you the time of Fajr. When that redness appears, it's the time of Fajr. Then when the disk appears over the horizon, when you first see the disk, that is Qaza of Fajr. So this one near to Fajr is one Tulu, one rising. When the disk is seen on the horizon, the second rising. Basically from the time of Azan of Fajr until Qaza of Fajr. That is Tulu Ain. Trust me when I tell you, majority of community at that time is asleep. 
and we are missing out we are seriously missing out why because this is also a very special time it's a time of a number of things number one time of blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number two time of forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number three very important time of rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustenance it's the time of receiving sustenance. Look at the hadith from, I believe, Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam. Inna al malaika tuqassimu arzaka bani adam. Indeed, the angels come to distribute the rizq of bani adam, children of adam, human beings. Ma bayna tulu'il fajr ila tulu'il shams In the time between rising of the sun near fajr time and rising of the sun above the horizon. Faman nama ma baynahuma Whoever sleeps in this time nama an rizqihi has slept whilst missing his rizq. Not only rizq of money not only risk of income, risk of knowledge, risk of spirituality, risk of grace of God, blessings of God, mercy of God, forgiveness of God. These are all included amongst a person's risk. Usually risk, yes, money, but in a higher way of looking at it, in a spiritual way of looking at it, Rizq can also be these other graces of Allah. So there's been so long we have missed these things, but it's not the end of the world. We can change now. We can start doing it now. However, there is one major obstacle to this. What do you think that is? Let's have some answers with Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. What do you think is the obstacle to this? Shaitan. We blame Shaitan for everything. I bet on Day of Judgment, Shaitan will say, actually, most of it was you, not me. Don't blame me for everything. Gunas. Maybe. I think it's even simpler than that. That's the one. I think that's the one. In all of our societies, we are mubtala with this thing. We are affected by this thing. Our sleeping patterns are not right. We wake up, we're tired. Daytime, we're tired. Evening, we're tired. Nighttime again, we sleep late, we're tired. We don't have the energy to stay awake this long. So we don't sleep sensibly. The trick of this is to sleep sensibly. Maybe at times we can't. Maybe during Mahi Ramadan, we can't. Our sleep is a little bit disrupted. Muharram, maybe we can't. But in general, what I'm trying to say, is that we should be sleeping much sen more sensibly than we sleep at the moment. We make the error of sleeping very late. Then we can't wake up. Or if we wake up, it's a quick, quick, as if, you know, our train is leaving, we pray namaz, we're back in the bed. It's not right. The main time of spirituality is going from the hands. Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, says, Yuhazzinuna bihi anfusahum wa yastathiruna bihi dawa adaihim. They create grief for themselves whilst reciting the Quran. How do they do this? Why do they do this? This is interesting. Take for example, during Muharram or any time, you want to remember Imam Hussein. Right? There are times. Our heart just feels like, let me remember Imam. So what do we do? One of the best things we do, and Alhamdulillah, this is excellent in the community, and may it continue for a long time, inshallah. We remember Nohas and Marsiyas, and we recite them, even in our minds or our heart, and we cry. True or not? This is what typically we do. 
We don't have a alim or someone to recite Masai whenever we want. So generally we'll remember one of the Nohas and we will cry. Why? To remember Imam Hussein. These muttaqeen, they do the same thing with Quran. They read Quran as if it's a living book and they create grief. So they look at verses where Allah talks about punishment, they grieve. They look at verses where Allah talks about, for example, how previous nations disappointed him and disobeyed him, they grieve. They read verses about how merciful he is, they grieve because they understand what a wonderful Lord I have. So they cry. They cry over the Quran. They seek cure from the Quran. They look at Quran as a guidance, as a document which is alive, which they can benefit from. Look at this regarding Imam Musa al Kazim. The narrator is called Hafs. Hafs reports. I have not seen anyone more intensely fearful over himself than Musa ibn Ja'far, nor anyone in whom people had more hope. So in his private life, he would be grieving, he would be at one with Allah, he would be communicating. But that doesn't mean he was some kind of recluse from society, that he was unapproachable. No, the Rawi says, Although he was like this in his personal life, when people saw him, they had hope. They said, if we need anything, this is the man. You need help? Musa ibn Ja'far. You need something? Musa ibn Ja'far. You need money? Musa ibn Ja'far. You need advice? Musa ibn He would help everybody. Then the Rawi says, his recitation of the Quran was full of grief. It was like he was speaking to a person Telling him of his grief. We've never looked at Quran like this, have we? We've always looked at Quran that quickly recite the chapter, recite the sipara, recite the surah, finish it. No. It's a living book. It's something to take live admonition and lesson from. Now, I want to emphasize something here. Quran. When do we recite Quran? Unfortunately, people say Mahi Ramzan. We recite Quran. In between Mahi Ramzan, okay, maybe we go on Umrah, Hajj, we recite Quran. In between then, okay, shab -e qadr In between then, not really, maybe when someone dies, go to Qabrastan, maybe at some family gatherings, we'll recite Quran. Where is that daily recitation of Qur'an gone? Where is that feeling of being one with the Book of Allah? One thing which you must do, brothers and sisters, is start the active, regular recitation of Qur'an in your homes, in your four walls of your houses. This is very important. Why? I want to give you an example with Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. You've traveled in a plane. You've traveled in a plane. When your plane is flying at night, you open the blind, you look out, and if there is land beneath, what you'll see is you'll see very small pockets of lights and large swathes of darkness. Some lights are more, you understand this is a town or a city. Some lights are very few, you understand this is like a village. And the areas where there's no light, what do you understand? That there's no one living there. When the angels fly over the world, they see the same thing. But with one difference. When they see specks of light, they know that those specks of light are the houses in which Qur'an is recited. And they rush there. They go to those houses. And they pray for those people. They do istighfar for those people. They bless those people. 
And where no Quran is recited, it's like those dark patches. They don't go there. So Hadith says, the houses in which Quran is recited glow and shine for the inhabitants of the skies, just like the stars glow and shine for the inhabitants of the earth. And they go there, they are attracted there. If you want to attract the Malaika of Allah into your home, trust me, recite the Quran. You'll see a difference after a while. So, we have discussed the nighttime routine of a mu'min and a muttaqi. Amirul Mu'mineen continues to say, "Fahum hanuna ala ausatihim." Other things that these mu'mineen and muttaqin do at night, they bend themselves from their backs. That means ruku. They do long rukus. They spend time in ruku. Ruku is a very amazing position. It's like you are bowing in front of your master. It's a very dignified thing to do. They bend themselves from their backs. They prostrate on their foreheads, their palms, their knees and their toes. And they beseech Allah for their deliverance. They are not confident. I don't know how some people are saying, we are confident we are going to go into the hereafter. Imam Ali was not confident. Can you believe it? Our Imam, he would not say I'm confident. Although we know he was a sublime human being, sinless, perfect, amazing. But he had that much humility and fear of Allah that he would not say, I'm confident of going to heaven. He would say, I will be judged like anyone will be judged. I have to face my Lord. I have to answer for my deeds. This was his humility. And But we are very, very audacious, aren't we? That we say we are confident to go to heaven. It's really a very sensitive thing. Let us come on to the daytime routine of a muttaqi with salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In the daytime, a muttaqi is now active because now he has to earn, especially the men, like I said. It's wajib upon us to provide our family's necessities. وَأَمَّنْ nahar During the day فَحُلَمَا He mentions four or five things. Number one, hulama. Hulama is plural of someone who has forbearance. It is one of the names of Allah as well. Halim. Someone who has forbearance is known by this term. Hulama is the plural. Ulama. They are knowledgeable. Abrar. They are good. They have goodness. And they are God-fearing. Let us look at each of these in turn. I'll give a brief description of it with Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Hilm. When you have forbearance. What is forbearance? In English, how would you translate? How would you explain forbearance? If someone is forbearing, what would we say? Enduring, patient, yes. In my type of English, can take a lot of crap. This is what it is actually. Tolerant is similar as well. But Hilm is a little bit more. He can take a lot of crap. Whatever people do to him, he's not phased. He can take it. He learns to deal with it. Honestly, I think when I think about the Masumin, one thing that I'll say about them, they have of course countless millions of Fazail, but one of the biggest Fazail, you know, is what? I think. You can disagree with me? I don't mind. I think one of the biggest Fazail is having patience in dealing with people like me and you. I don't know how they did it. We get frustrated, don't we? When we have to deal with so many people with all their strange ideas and strange things that they say. The way they like to put people down, they like to bring you into issues that you're not part of. How did our Imams deal with this? So many people with so many issues. So the first thing is a muttaqi is someone of hilm. He has forbearance. Forbearance, the proper definition in akhlaq of Islam is this. A kind of peace and serenity of the soul 
which means the person is not easily angered and if anything negative happens he does not go into chaos and commotion Hilm very very important Hilm so they have Hilm number two they are ulama ulama plural of alim that means they are learned they have knowledge they have understanding I am going to refer you back to my first lecture what I said was that in this day and age if anyone says I don't have access to resources for learning I would say shame on you I cannot believe that in this day and age anyone can say we do not have access to resources for learning we have every kind of app we can think of we have the internet at our fingertips literally at our fingertips we have entire courses lectures majalis no matter what you say they are all available online on youtube we cannot be saying things like let Maulana say this from the member then we will listen i'm sorry no you have these things at your fingertips please use them please use them wisely so they are ulama they are abrar they are good forgiving generous and kind that is the definition of abrar bir goodness abrar those who are good they are atqiya they are careful what we might say parhezgar fearful of god whenever they come across an issue if they are not sure if they say something doesn't look right in this they'll avoid if they come across an issue they're not sure is this halal or haram they'll say i'm not doing it until i know a non muttaqi person what would he say a normal muslim he would say not sure if it's halal or haram i'll do it because i'm not going to get guna for it if you don't know something generally you can do it but not a muttaqi atqiya no he would say i'm not sure i'm not going to do it what i'm about to say to you is it gibat or not i better not say it what i'm about to say to you it might hurt you it might not i'm not sure i'm not going to say it atqiya they take a lot of care they're very careful in what they do and what they say salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad I want to give you one hadith. Brothers, are you all right? Can you can you withstand some more uh, heartfelt advice from the Masumin? I know I've said a lot about community because I feel part of your community. This is my fourth time. It would be remiss of me if I didn't take some care. It'd be very easy for me to land here, pray, get some wawas, go. You remember me nicely. You'll pray for me. I'll pray for you. But I'm not like that. I think that if I'm here, I have a duty to perform. Is it okay? Can you recite one salawat, please? <laughs> Your disputes in the community. Brothers, sisters, is crazy. I can't myself, I can't keep up with the disputes and the issues amongst people in the community. Let me give you a hadith from Sadiq Ali Muhammad Imam Jafar Sadiq. <laughs> Imam says, when a dispute takes place between two people, two angels appear at that moment. Whoever is the more foolish and argumentative of the two people, the, angel, one, the angels say to the, that person, you spoke and spoke and spoke. Whatever you have said, you are befitting of those words in other words a man matches his words whatever you have said you are befitting to those words whatever you have said will be accounted for the angels are telling him and if one of them is forbearing if one of them is taking the crap if one of them is withstanding the rubbish coming from the other side they will say to him or her bravo to you well done you had sabr you have shown hilm may Allah forgive you if you can finish this matter in this way 
Sometimes it's better just to hear it and say like we say in Farsi, Chashm, Sar Ankopar, fine, okay, Chashm, and walk away. Those angels are praying for you. But if this person, the forbearing one, leaves Hilm and start to dispute himself, he gives it back as he receives, the angels leave that area and they go away. So Hilm, Ilm, Bir and Taqwa. What happens to these people? Why don't we do this more? Why don't we just walk away? Can someone tell me? What stops us from just walking away? Mama Dali Bhai. Ego. To feel that he won. We don't like that feeling. I don't like to feel that in this jagra he won. I don't like the feeling in this issue that I lost. Right? Amir al Mu'minin says these people they come across as weak. They come across as weak. This is not our concern. How we come across to people of the world is not our concern. Our concern is how do we come across to people of the next world. The angels, the Ahlul Bayt. They are our concern. Not people in this world. Now, let us go a little bit further. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Listen to these words of Amir al Mu'mineen. Reflect upon this. These kinds of people are different to the majority of people. The majority of people, they won't take crap. They'll give it back. They won't feel defeated. They will want to defeat. They won't walk away. They will engage in a dispute. Amir al Mu'mineen says, Yanzuru ilayhimun nadir fayahsabuhum marda. These are such beautiful words. The onlooker looks at such a person and says, He's weird. He's strange. Look at him just walking away. Yanzuru ilayhimun nadir fayahsabuhum marda. The person who is on looking at this issue, at these kinds of people who are like this, they say, this is a very strange man. Look at him. Sometimes they even come to you and they say, are you going to let him talk to you like that? To stir the masala more, you know? Are you going to let him talk to you like that? You know your izzat, he just did your bay izzati, he dishonored you. Are you going to let him do that? They try to flame, flame the fire more. But these people are not weird, Amir al-Mu'mineen says. You think they're weird, they're not weird. People say to these people, you are crazy. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, yes, they are crazy. A very serious matter has made them crazy. People say, these guys are crazy. Amir al says, yes, from one angle they are crazy. A very serious matter has made them crazy. What is this serious matter? What is this serious matter that makes the muttaqeen appear crazy? Different to other people, strange. The people of the world are not like this, but these people are different. What has made them different? What is Amrun Azim? Tremendous event, tremendous matter, tremendous issue. What are they like in the eyes of Allah? What answer will they give on the Day of Judgment? One day I have to appear before my Lord and give an account. One day this tongue of mine, these hands of mine will all testify. How am I going to live with that on that day. How am I going to put myself into that position? What if janab -e zahra comes and sees what I have done? How will I show my face to Imam Hussein on what I have done in my life? 
How will I show my Mawla Ali that I used to argue and dispute with his own Shias who had a love for him? These things have made them crazy in a good way, in a positive way. وَقَدْ خَالَتَهُمْ أَمْرٌ عَظِيمٌ They are very, very affected by this. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This is why brothers and sisters and mourners over our beloved third Imam, this is why Karbala has lasted until today. Because the people of Karbala did not behave like normal human beings. Normal human beings, what they would have done is they would have given allegiance. Or they would have given up. Or they would have said, Imam was saying, okay, you know what, this is on you, we are going. Imam, this is your mamla, we are leaving, you deal with it. It's not about us, it's about you. Or they would have said, Imam, you know, I'm, I'm busy, I have a home and a wife and some kids, I need to go. Is it okay if I go? No. This is the time when the people of Karbala, why it has lasted so long is because it goes against all normal human habits. And it raises to the level of godly habits and divine habits. Otherwise, you can't find an example like Karbala. You can't find an example like Ali Yunil Akbar for Imam Hussein. You cannot find an example of a father with a beautiful, handsome, akin to his grandfather's example, youth like Ali Yunil Akbar, and the father says, Allow, he allows him to go forth and to fight. Ali Yunil Akbar, what a human being. What a brave soul Ali Yunil Akbar was. Beloved to Imam, elder son of his father. Older than Imam Zainul Abideen. He was the eldest. Imam Zainul Abideen was known as Ali the middle one. Ali Yunil Awsat. Ali Yunil Akbar. People would come from all around. We missed the sight of Rasulullah. They would be told, don't worry. You missed Rasulullah, we will show you someone exactly like Rasulullah. His speech sounds like the speech of Rasulullah. His face looks like the face of Rasulullah. The way he walks and talks is all like Rasulullah. Who is that? Ali Yunil Akbar. Go and see him. Ali Yunil Akbar on the day of Ashura. After all the companions are killed according to the history, reliable history that we have. He is the first of the Hashimi of the family of the Imam to come to Imam and to say, Aba Abdullah, I wish to go forth. Here there's a very sad scene. The scene is this. Imam and Ali Yunil Akbar are facing one another. An old father has to hear the words from a young son. Oh father, may I be sacrificed for you. They say that at that moment, neither of them spoke. Imam did not grant permission with words. Imam put down his head and that signal to Ali Yunil Akbar that yes, my father has granted me permission. Then they say that we saw Hussein and Ali Yunil Akbar embrace one another. And as they embraced, Hussein put his head on the shoulder of Ali, Ali Yunil Akbar. Ali Akbar put his head on the shoulder of Imam Hussein. And they both cried for a long, long time. Both of them cried on one another. After a time, Imam lifts his head and says, Son, you may go. Ali Yunil Akbar puts on the armor, bids farewell, mounts the horse, starts to ride out into Karbala. Before he can reach anywhere, he hears a strange sound. He hears that there are footsteps behind. As he turns and looks behind, he sees the old father coming after him. Ali Yunil Akbar says, Father, we have just bid farewell to one another. 
we just bid farewell to one another. The father says, Ya Ali Yunil Akbar, you do not understand. You are so beloved to me. And they say that when he was leaving, Hussein and Zainab and these people, they would look at Ali and they would say, you can go. But Mahalan Mahala, go slowly, slowly. Keep looking at us. Let us see you as much as possible. Ali Yunil Akbar was very special. He was very beloved. He was special to all of Ahlul Bayt. He rides out. He fights bravely. He fights for a long time. And then he feels the heat of the sun and the fatigue of no food and water. He feels the weight of the armor. He puts his horse round. He comes back to Abba Abdullah. He says, Ya Abata, O oh Father dear, let me ask you, I understand there is no water, but I am so tired, I am so fatigued. Is there any chance of even one drop that you can give me? <laughs> Hussein says, Ali, here is my mouth, look at it. If you can find even a drop of saliva, you can have this. When Ali Akbar looks at the mouth of Imam Hussein, he says, Abba Abdil, oh father, ya abata, you are offering me a drop of saliva, but your mouth is more dry than my mouth. Again he mounts, again he rides out. The Shahadat of Ali Yunil Akbar is very painful. It's very dardnak. It's very full of grief. In very brief, let me tell you, Ali Yunil Akbar rides. He is fighting. He's fighting bravely. He's fighting and he's sending many of the warriors of Umar Saad's army to hell. Eventually, the fatigue, the sun, the heat, everything is piling upon Ali Yunil Akbar. From advance. Umar Esad tells one of the enemies who had a good aim and a good shot, you are to ply and plow the spear into the body of Ali Yunil Akbar. Whatever happens, we need this warrior to come down. As the spear is thrown, it is lodged into the body of Ali Yunil Akbar. The horse panics, the horse loses control. They say the horse begins to bolt into the army of Umar Esad. What does Umar Esad do? He says, now draw your swords as this young man is stumbling upon the horse you are to raise your swords irban irba the maktal says and they cut him piece by piece piece by piece ali yunil akbar falls to the ground he calls his father ya aba abdullah ya abata adrikni oh father come to me imam hussein this is the very strange part of ali yunil akbar shahadat they say that on the day of ashura it was a bright day. It was a bright day. There was no storm. There was no darkness. Everything was very, very open. Still we saw and we did not understand that when Hussein was running to Ali Akbar, he would stumble, he would fall, he would lose his way. And we heard Hussein shout out, Aina, Aina, Ali Akbar, Aina. Where are you, Ali Yunil Akbar? This is the heavy weight on the mind of a father going to to the head of his beloved. Allah la'anatullah lil qawmi al-zalimeen wa sayya'lamu al-lazheena zalamu ayya munkalibin yankalibun Let us remember all marhumeen, marhumat of the mu'mineen, of your families, of all of our families. Rahimallahu man kara al-fatiha.